Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and today I am super excited because I get to share some things that I've had for a while, and um, I'm really gonna piece today. We're not gonna be on the long arm, I'm gonna go use my machine. But today we are working on these June Taylor project bags. Um, this is a quilt as you go project bag, and it's a set of two project bags. You're gonna get an 18 inch square bag and a 16 inch square bag. It has everything you need. It has your vinyl, it has your substrate to piece it, and then it also has um, your zippity do done zippers. It's their, their way to install zippers. It's so easy and fast. And if you're scared of installing zippers, these are the way to go. Um, the other thing is if you want to make a project bag and you've bought a pattern and like it just doesn't make sense, this will make sense because it's stitch and flip, put the stuff together and you're done. Basically you stitch and flip the back you add the top or you put the zippers in and which again there's zippity do done i'll show you them in a second and then you put your binding on and the project bag is done so it's super fast um i've already cut all my fabrics you can see kind of fabric behind me uh you have the quilt loaded fabrics on the long arm before i start quilting that um so you're going to get a set of two this bag is open this is the one we're using this is my next bag that i can use later so we're going to start with this these are the zippity do on zippers. You have your zipper, you have your zipper tape, and you have a piece of double fold bias on that zipper tape. So when we do the install of this, all we have to do, I'm gonna use my go cutter, is slide our project between those two zippers and top stitch, and the zipper's installed. It's super easy. It's going to make things go really fast. So if you are scared of zippers, this is a nice project. If you're teaching a little one to sew, what a great way to install a zipper with them. Um, you will get your vinyl. Uh, it's going to come folded. I used my Laura Star over here and I put on my um, Teflon protective sole plate, heated my vinyl up to, so I could lay it out. I'll show you that in a bit. And then this is your substrate material. So this is what we're gonna be sewing on. You can see that it's gridded for each one. So you have a square and a square block and then a log cabin block. Um, or actually, I think it's a courthouse steps um, and a square and a square. But these are all your pieces. Now this substrate is a polyester material. You do not wanna hit this with your iron, okay? So do not iron directly on this. Read your directions. For those of you with the lower star, if you put on your protective plate, you can iron directly on this. You're not gonna hurt it. You can put your iron right onto that vinyl. Again, we're gonna see that later. So um, I'm gonna iron this before I put it and start stitching it because I can use my Teflon protective sole plate over on my lower star to do that. Um, I'm, maybe I'll show you that part. The other thing, released just today, it just finished over on the AccuQuilt website, is their uh, April Dye to Try. It is the cutest thing, and it's the little kittens. Um, so one, I think these are so cute. I don't even really like cats, but these are super cute. I would use them, and I'm gonna use them. They're gonna be on my bag. Um, super cute, just came out. I promise you, it, as a die to try, they make a select number, and then when they sell out, they sell out, and it might come back. If you'd like these, get them now. They will, they will go fast. They're, they're cats. People love cats. Quilters love cats. So these are some of the colors that I'm going to do. I pre-fused all of this, and then I am going to fuse this onto my vinyl with my Laura Star. So um, these are my two cats. I haven't named them. I was texting with Pam over AccuQuilt. I told her that she can give them their names. But aren't they so cute? Um, I am using Deco... I can't think of what the line is. It's Juicy Juice and it's Deco something. Um, I don't think it's Art Deco. Maybe Deco Art, Deco Pop, but it's a Juicy Juice line. So uh, we will be fusing these onto the vinyl. Anything else? I think I'm gonna piece, this one has a lot more. So I think I'm gonna piece this one off camera. I'll piece this one with you to show you um, how the June Taylor stuff, actually, let me trim this. And I think the directions say to trim it a half inch around each piece. Now I gotta look. Uh, let's see. Ba -ba 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 Tissue paper. Do not iron directly on the stabilizer. Did you hear? Do not iron directly on your vinyl. If you have a lower star and you put on your protective uh, Teflon protective sole plate, you can do both of those. Um, where does it say to cut out my stabilizer? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Dun, 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 dun
Cut vinyl. Cut around pattern pieces, stabilizer, leaving a half inch to three quarter. So I'm gonna trim these up just because I'm here at my cutting table. A half inch to three quarter. And let's just eyeball it right in the middle. And, oh look. That's what happens when you have a nice new rotary blade. When was the last time you changed your rotary blade? I need the ruler that's right under everything. Um, change your rotary blades. If you haven't done it in a while, it might be the time to do it. The number one leading cause of cutting your finger is a dull blade. I don't really know if that's true. I just made it up. Um, so you're going to just trim this stuff up. And let's see. You have lines for everything, which is nice. And I would have just cut my finger off because I wasn't paying attention. Don't cut your fingers off, please. Oh, what if I did that on camera? Not fun. And you could just rough cut around this stuff. You'll be fine. And I'm only going to cut out one because I don't think you need to watch me cut this out. Yes, I am throwing everything on the ground. It'll be fine. I'm going to go back in and pick it up later. Say, sure you are. We've seen your room. All right, so I'm going to cut both of them out because I have, still have my log cabin. So I'm going to cut this one out, and I'm going to try to keep the pieces together. This is for the big bag. It is the bigger piece. This is the bigger bag. Here's the before. I'll see you right back here in a second. I'm going to go press this with my lower star. And here's the after. So you can still see where it was folded, but it's going to lay nice and flat, and it's going to work for me. Um, now, one of the things, how these work is that you have placement lines. So there's my square. This is my number one. This is my square. It fits right inside those placement lines. Now, those lines are placement lines. They're not so lines. So when I put my next piece on, which would be piece number two, and they're marked. I have places where that one's gonna go. And now, I'm gonna stitch my quarter inch. And I will put it on the other side. I will stitch my quarter inch. And for those of you uh, no lower star people, you are going to finger press this or use a pressing sheet or something. Um, but I would take this to my iron because I'm going to leave that sole plate on for this whole project because I can still press on this. I'm going to be able to press this. I can still use steam on this. I'm not going to use steam on the vinyl. So I would um, stitch my first two pieces because in this case they're on opposite sides. Press it add my next ones and I'm just adding and going around it's going to be a super fast project and um, so I'm gonna make this one behind the scenes you're gonna go with me um, as I make this one so we're gonna start that one and we'll see you over at the machine all right so this is the big one it is done it is pieced I forgot to mention one thing directions have you piece the top and the bottom together so the backing should have been on this I want to quilt it um, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch, so I'm not going to do anything um, fancy, but I wanted to do that separate. So I went just everything right onto the substrate. Remember, if you are using a regular iron, you cannot touch it to the substrate. It will melt it. Um, but I put it right onto the substrate. I am going to maybe add a piece of batting. I think I'm going to put batting in one and maybe soft and stable in the other one just to play around. Why not? Why not put things in there? And then I'm going to stitch the ditch. So again, nothing fancy. I'm just going to stitch the ditches on this. Um, same thing with the other one. And then I will have them done and they'll have a little bit more um, stability to them. But this is what they look like when it's stitched. This is the back. It is stitched by numbers. It's like paper piecing, but not really because you don't have to rip it off. It's going right inside the bag. I also, because I did it like this and I didn't stitch them all together, I did um, a basting stitch. So I finished it, turned it upside down, and basting stitched on the outside line. So I knew where that was because I think that's going to be a trim line later. And I wanted to make sure that I was aware where it is. When I add the backing, I think I will add the backing and the batting on. And then from the top, stitch on that basting line again so I know where to trim later. So um, that's this one. But I'm going to get the other one trimmed. We're going to go over to the machine so you can see the stitch and flip process. Um, and then I have binding ready and everything. So we'll see you back here in a second. 
Okay, we're over at the iron and I decided we're gonna do this before we start piecing, just so you can see. So this is a Laura Star. This is my Laura Star system. Fan built in the board. You can go see other videos for that. But um, every Laura Star iron comes with this. This is a Teflon protective sole plate. When you use this, we're gonna click it right onto our iron. And there we go. And so now it's gonna reduce the temperature of our iron about 100 degrees. If you have a Laura Star and you have a temperature control, Always leave it on high. Just leave the iron on high. If you need it to be cooler, put this on. This will let me put it right on vinyl. It can still press, I can still steam. So um, the thing with the steam is, you want this to get hot before you start steaming because it's cold metal, hot steam. You're gonna get condensation. So put this on, let it sit for like five minutes. You still get full steam. I still get my, my full quality steam, but um, I want that to get heated up first. So a few things. We have our zipper. The zippers come folded now that I have a folded zipper tape. So I can steam my zipper. Any zippers, all of your zippers. Now I have a flat zipper. Perfect, I need that. Um, when you're making binding, I can use that steam. I'm gonna press this open really quick. If I can open it up. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that this has a fan that's gonna suck the steam away from my fingers. There we are. Now I have that nice and flat. I can steam this. Now I usually wouldn't use this, and remember, I usually wanna do the sole plate to do that. I can take that off, and I can press this as normal. That fast, nice crease, everything's done. So I'm gonna, press that and then I can put the sole plate back on. Now this does get hot. Don't touch the sole plate, it gets hot. It's just not as hot as the bottom of that iron. So here is one of my uh, vinyls. It's creased. If you don't have a Laura Star, stick this outside. Stick it out in the sun, it'll relax it some. I'm gonna take this with that on, directly onto the vinyl. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to heat the vinyl up to relax those folds and get it to lay a little bit flatter. Don't put it in the dryer. Somebody said they put it in the dryer and melted it. Don't do that. I can flip it around. And it's just, we're trying to get the creases out of the vinyl. It is gonna stick, it's vinyl, but it's not gonna melt it. So I can like touch it, it does get warm, but it doesn't get hot. So I wanna press it from one side and then from the other side as well, cause I'm trying, ooh, that, that worked really nice right there. Cause I'm trying to get those, those uh, folds out. I know that that's at least been in the pack since Daytona and that was a month and a half ago or so. And now I have a piece of vinyl. Let's see. I can still see where those folds were, but it's not as creased. And I can hit it some more and play with it. Um, the other thing is don't lose this tissue paper. You're gonna need that when you're doing some other stuff. So directions are gonna tell you to trim your tissue paper or your uh, vinyl. This one's trimmed. This is for the large bag. It's trimmed at 14 and a half by 19 or so. I'm going to get my ruler. So I'm not gonna press on this, but I want to have placement for my cats. Because my cats are gonna, I'm gonna press my cats onto this. So I'm gonna lay this, oh, actually I'm not gonna lay it there. Do I wanna? I need to take this paper off. So I'm gonna lay it on top and it's really hard to see because it's clear. Um, so 14 and a half, that would be seven and a quarter. 19 would be 18 and a, nine and a half. Seven and a quarter by nine and a half. So this is the center of this, of this uh, bag. So I'm gonna say these are approximately five inches tall. So I wanna go four and a half from this. Is that right? No, five and a half, two and a half. One, two and a half. We'll put one, I'm gonna do a half inch from the edge. And so I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want this. I use, these are with steam seam So they have steam seam on the back and steam seam leaves it a little bit tacky. If I was thinking about it, 
I would have mirror imaged them, but I didn't. This is what we're getting. So if this is, uh, that was here. I wanna go there. I wanna go here. And this is gonna help me line these up. And they're not lined up very well. But I can still move them because they're not pressed on. And I'm gonna use that line right there. And I just wanna make sure I press them down and I don't get any bubbles. And again, I'm just using steam a seam Move this one up a little bit. I'm like, where did my lines go? But this ruler only has lines for squares. There we go. So this is basically my two cats centered on this uh, this vinyl. <clears throat> Hopefully they're still centered whenever I put it together. So there we go. I don't have to put the tissue paper back behind it, but I want you to see. And I think you can see a little bit better with the tissue paper. So I've pre-fused um, everything. I fused all of this on on like a, a fusing mat um, because the the heat of the iron, because it's not super hot, it's um, I want to make sure I get all the pieces fused. So all of them are down. Now I'm taking my iron and I'm sticking it right on top of the cap. And I'm just going to let it, sit, let it sit there. I'm not using steam. I'm not, I don't need to steam it. Steam is just going to condense onto the plastic. I'm just hitting that cat so I can heat up that fusible and fuse it onto my vinyl. Cat one, cat two. And then I can look at it, see how it looks. Everything, it looks fused. Oh, this is so cool. This is the coolest thing. I, I learned this and then I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fuse everything to vinyl. And I kind of have. So now I have two cats fused onto my vinyl for my bag. And hopefully they're centered. And you know what? If they're not centered, um, then it is. It is what it is. If you want to, if you're like an overpresser, I can come on and fuse it from the back too. So this is what that Teflon protective sole plate is going to do. It's going to let you fuse right on to your vinyl. I mean, I'm not melting it. I can touch it. Like the stuff is fused on. I can actually see that it's fused because I can't see the fusible anymore. Very cool. This is very cool. And now I have my cats, the vinyl, and we needed that for our next step that you're going to see over there. The other thing, remember, the directions say do not touch this with your iron, you'll melt it. Because that Teflon sole plate's on, put out my thing, I can iron these. For these, I'm going to steam because it's just a piece of substrate. And we'll do our next one. And I'm just trying to get my, uh, get it to lay down a little bit better. So I can still see a crease, but I can see that it's like, it's flat. So my substrate is ready and now I can go over and work on the machine. And we're gonna do like two pieces here. I think you're gonna get the gist. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to install the zipper and yeah, we'll be done. All right, so here we have our pieces. Really quick, I was um, pressing this a little more and I don't know if you can see that, but I wasn't moving the iron while I was steaming. When you steam, you have to move the iron because the steam is hot and the steam, where the steam came out, uh, melted this a little bit. As long as I kept the iron moving, it didn't melt it. So just be careful because the steam does come out hot. So um, this is fine. It's just going to be some of the substrate, so it's not going to worry. Um, so I have my piece one. You'll see piece one. And I'm going to put my fabric on. If you're worried about direction, worry about that. I don't. So fabric one is on. Now I'm going to place fabric two. There we are. And that's going here and here. Because I'm going to line up my edges, and now I'm just going to press that through with a quarter inch. And because three is on the opposite side, I'm going to flip this around and put on number three. These go so fast. I did that first one in less than 10 minutes. Okay. 
the other nice thing is they don't have to be perfect. So the, for those of you without a lower star, at this point, you're either going to use a pressing cloth or you're just going to finger press and push this over. I'm going to go press this on my iron because I like it to be really flat. Okay, so now we're there. We're flat. Now we're going to add piece four and five. They are the same colors. And I just cut them according to the directions. And there's a good chance I was just stitching at three stitches in, or, uh, a 3.0 stitch width and that was because I was quilting a second ago so I just changed it back to 1.8. There we go. And then now I would go press this one and then put on my next pieces. You understand, you get the gist. Now, let's find this. So this is one of our zippity do done zippers. I need to change my bobbin and my thread because I want to use a different color because I'm in a top stitch. So this is an Omni V. This is a polyester variegated thread from Superior Threads. It's the color that I had that I liked. You can use whatever you want. And I just did all of that threading and I forgot I need to wind a bobbin first because this thread is gonna be seen on both sides. But I was such a good threader, right? I don't have a ton of stitching with this thread so I didn't put a ton on the bobbin. All right, here's our zippity doo done zipper. I'm gonna fold it in half and just finger press where that half is because I'm gonna try to get everything in the same spot. I could actually, let's not finger press, let's just pop a, ne a needle into it. All right, so this piece is the piece that I quilted um, and I just did some straight lines. I didn't even change the thread color. And this is my zippity doo done zipper. So we're gonna install the zipper um, luckily, that line is my center right here. So I'm just going to open this up knowing that that's my center mark. So this is my center mark. This is my, let me make sure. Yes, this is my center line. So I'm going to just open this up and stick my project into my zipper tape. Trying to keep it as centered as I can. There you are. There you go. And I'm off a little bit, so I'm just going to pull my tape, my tape over. Look how easy that is. So now I'm in. So I could pin this. Um, you know what I might do is I happen to have some sew tights sitting next to me. I'm going to pop these on here. And we're going to start from over there. And I'll only put two or three. Mm -hmm. These are so tight's dots. So I have my so tights here. I have my stuff installed my fabric installed, it's pushed all the way back. So now I'm just gonna come around to my machine and careful, cause these will pick up the metal of this machine. And I'm gonna do about an eighth of an inch from the side. Um, I think I'm gonna do a two stitch length. I'm kind of running the side of my um, zipper right on this little dash right here, or the side of this foot. It's probably not even an eighth of an inch.
when I get close, I'm going to take this off because it's a magnet and it will pick up the metal of my machine. Serious, I can't believe how easy this is. If all zippers were this easy, everybody would install zippers. One of the best things, this is my zipper pull right here. I don't have to worry about pulling the zipper pull and getting everything ready. Like, it's already out of the way because I have this double fold uh, bias tape on here. And there you have it. I'm all, I'm done installing that side. Oh, that thread looks perfect. Now I'm gonna grab my vinyl and install the other side. All right, so one thing with the vinyl is it's gonna stick to anything metal. So like it's gonna stick to the bed of my machine. So I'm gonna leave that tissue paper under it. I'm gonna try to find the center real quick. And I'll just add a little crease so I can see it right there. Move this back around and I want to pay attention to what side is up because when I move this, this is how, um, this is the top of the bag. This will be the bottom of the bag. So I want to make sure I can see that. There I go. And so I'm going to stick my vinyl into my zippity do done. Fine. There's my center crease. Perfect. So that's the center. There we are. I'm going to grab those because I can't use pins. I, I guess you could use pins because they're going to be under the zipper tape. But you just have to be careful. Oh my gosh, we're going to put that here. And I just moved everything. There we are. And all right, there's one. that one right there. There's two. There we go. We're going to put two. I'm going to take that pin out. And now I'm going to stitch. <laughs> they just got caught. I'm going to stitch this side up. And I'm just going to try to like maneuver and manage the bulk of this vinyl off to the right. I just folded it over. Oops, I have pins going everywhere. Make sure everything's in there. Get my stuff ready. And stitch it up. So now, the front, what is that? I got black fuzz on there. So now the front is done. And this will be um, just uh, stuck onto the back. And in theory, 
in theory, it will look like this, except for this is actually the, the back of the bag. Oh, I kind of like it in the front. So yeah, so that is, that is this bag. I'm gonna finish it up. We'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, so it is done. Well, one of them is done. So this is the one that I was working on. I wouldn't press the other two. So again, I have to add the outside. But this one is done, and it is so cute. Oh, I should have showed you the back first. So this is the piece. I, this is the part I pieced. This is what I did with the stitch and flip. Again, I didn't put the interior, like the lining piece, in. I pieced it all, and then I went and just stitched the ditch for my quilting. So if I look through here, I can see my ditch stitching in the quilting. Um, here are my cats. I could have added more. I didn't realize this bag was so big. Oh my gosh, it could fit a small child. Um, our zippity do done zippers that are so easy to use. And if you were wondering, this is the June Taylor Project Bag. It is the set of two. The package actually fits in my bag. And I use the new April Dye to Try. This is the kitten dye. It is so cute. Like I said, it's going fast, or it will go fast. It also, they should just sell this as a kit. Look at that. Ba -ba. Um, these are huge bags. I like a project bag, but I always am like, I need one that fits big blocks. So this is going to fit nice and big blocks. Um, what is it? The ending size is like 18 and a half square. Mine turned out to be about 18 and a half square. So that's it. Super fun. I put the binding on and then just did a machine binding on the top. I always do the bottom right corner a different color. So I was able to do that here too. It's just super cute. Um, again, I should have added like 15 cats. What am I going to do on the other one? I don't know. I think I'm going to do some fake um, EPP because I have ideas for that. I'll post stuff on the social medias if I do it. But yeah, there's my there's my project bag. This is one of two with the zippity doo done zippers. I pressed everything with the Laura Star using my Teflon nonstick protective sole plate, which reduces the temperature of the iron so you can actually go right onto vinyl and press on that substrate. Remember, I found out if you hold the steam down and not move this, when you're pressing the substrate, the steam will burn that and melt that substrate. So don't do that. Steam as you go. Move it and then steam. I don't know. So uh, that's it. Uh, all the links are below for things. I have my affiliate links down below for um, AccuQuilt. Remember, you can always call Apple Tree Quilting and they'll um, hook you up with some AccuQuilt stuff. Um, but yeah, these are the June Taylor Project bag, AccuQuilt, uh, Die to Try for April, the kitten. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.